everyone, and welcome to our ongoing series featuring our friends from VikingsTerritory.com. I'm Tom Moore, and in this segment, we welcome Brent Labath to our 2014 Minnesota Vikings preview segment on VikeFans.com. Brent, how you doing today? I'm excellent, Tom. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. We're glad to have you. But i got to tell you, you've been assigned the pretty tough task by the rest of your coworkers of giving Viking fans a better understanding of our new coaching staff. Are you ready to help us dissect the coaches and their styles? Yeah, absolutely. I'll show you what it's like. Good enough. Well, we're going to start at the top, and it really becomes a change that most fans see as good. And when you look at the passive style fans saw out of Leslie Frazier last year, what can fans expect to see differently style-wise from Mike Zimmer on game day? Well, that's a good question. I, you know, I was a big fan of the Mike Zimmer hire right out of the gate. He was, he was probably the guy that I wanted the most just after watching what he had in Cincinnati and the success he'd had in, in Dallas and, and other places as well. I think what you're going to expect to see from Mike um, out of on a weekly basis is a lot of different variations in a, uh, in a I guess a foundational four three defense. We've seen a little bit of that in the preseason games already with players moving around, asked to be pretty versatile. Last week against Kansas City, I saw Brian Robeson play uh, almost like an inside linebacker position, standing up on a third down play, which was kind of odd to see, but. With that type of athleticism that you have in your front seven of the Minnesota Vikings have, I think you can be a little bit more versatile with your defense, and I think that's what we're going to see Mike Zimmer's defense moving into this year. And that's probably going to be a pretty stark difference compared to what we saw in that vanilla cover two defense that uh, Leslie Frazier had run for, for years prior. Yeah, you know, it's funny that you say that because at camp I was watching, and doggone it, if I didn't see an old high school defense with a five-man front. Right, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that as well, and I think the luxury of being able to, to use guys like Everson Griffith and Brian Robinson and, and you know, Chad Greenway has been shifting around at linebacker himself a little bit. It's going to be a little bit different to see, but I'm excited because he's not afraid to, to take some risks and hopefully force some, some bad plays by the offense. You know, it's funny you mention that because obviously you can see the different aggressiveness. We see more interceptions. But I tell you what, Chad Greenway looks reborn in this defense, doesn't he? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he came over with the interception in Kansas City, which is always great to see. I hope what Mike Zimmer is able to do with the chat is, is isolate where chat is really, really strong still from a performance standpoint and just ask him to do those things and, and have chat excel in those areas. And then maybe rely on some other players to do some, uh, some other things, whether it might be in, uh, you know, chat coverage or whatever it might be that chat it might be losing a little step in coverage. But yeah, I think chat does look a little rejuvenated and I think he's excited to play for a defensive minded coach like Mike Zimmer. Well, you know, we talk about Mike Zimmer and the defense, but really it's defensive coordinator George Edwards who's really setting up the defensive game plan. And when you look at it, uh, Brent, uh, when I was at a camp in Mankato, Edwards was pretty vocal on the field. So what do you see his role in being uh, during game day running this defense versus Zimmer? I would agree with you, Tom. I saw Edwards being uh, vocal as well. I was kind of curious to see where the line was going to be drawn the sand between Zimmer and Edwards, but Edwards seems to be really hands-on, just like Mike Zimmer himself. I think George Edwards is going to have a pretty strong role in a day-to-day game type of management. I think Zimmer's always going to have that overlying umbrella, kind of making sure everything's going as, as planned, but I'm excited to have George Edwards as a part of our, our defensive strategy. You know, he's come up and he's worked with guys like Kyle Williams in Buffalo or even Zach Thomas in uh in Miami, Champ Bailey in Washington. I mean, those both types of players uh, are kind of once a generational type of players, and the fact that he's been able to to work with them, I think, is always going to help us kind of develop our young defense as well. And do you see George Edwards calling the plays on game day, or do you see Mike Zimmer doing that? I think Edwards will call the majority of the plays. I ultimately do. I think Zimmer will, will work with him on a weekly basis and kind of set like this this general strategy that they're going to roll out across the game, but. I think Edwards will be calling the plays. I think Zimmer has first right of refusal, obviously, at any point if he feels like he needs to make a change or uh, call a different play to get a, a stop or a third down or a stop or whatever it might be. But I do think Zimmer is going to give Edwards as much freedom as possible to run the defense as his own. Well, that's good. I, I like the way he's delegating. Obviously, you know, under Frazier it kind of was centralized, and here it seems like Zimmer really trusts the coordinators he has as well as the other coaches. I absolutely agree. That was actually one of the things that I was really excited about. Uh, I know we haven't touched on, on the offense yet, but the fact that Zimmer went out and hired a guy like North Turner, who has head coaching experience, has a, a ton of NFL coaching experience as a whole, but Zimmer was confident enough that he wanted the guy to come in, help develop a quarterback, run an offense, because he knew that wasn't his strong suit. And, and the fact that you can kind of give somebody that type of responsibility when it's his first head coaching job, you know, shows a, a great deal of understanding of the game and where he is as a coach and, and understanding what they need to be done to be successful as a team. Yeah, well, to be fair, I mean, Leslie Frazier did trust Bill Musgrave. I'm just not sure the rest of us did. 
<laughs> that's, that's exactly right. There was some trust there. I just, it was a head scratcher from the get-go, I think, on the decision on, on the bring Musgrave in. And uh, obviously, fans are excited to have Turner because of the reputation he carries with them. Yeah, no doubt. Well, obviously, when we turn to special teams, Mike Prefer's name was mentioned way too often in the offseason, and now he's facing a three-game suspension. And I'm curious, Brent, uh, what type of problems, if any, would you expect on special teams as he sits out those first three weeks? That's a great question. You know, Prefer's always been an interesting guy to me. I think he's always been pretty notable for being a very vocal coach. I'm curious how that replacement coach can be. I'm really curious to see how vocal he can be, how how closely he can grab the range of the team to really hold hold them to the feet of the fire to perform at the highest standard that Prefer would expect. Because I know uh, Prefer has really high expectations for his team, and, and you can see that in the, the, the kind of due diligence he puts into the practice that they come out even at the beginning of camp. So I'm, I'm curious to see if there's any mental lapses, if, if you have coverage breakdowns, if, if you know the special teams just does not look as sharp as it typically does. I do know that uh, has some assistant coaches on the special teams uh, as well who will kind of help bridge the gap. But um, yeah, obviously they're, they're not at the point from a coaching standpoint where Steelman and Denver felt confident enough to just let them run the show for the first three weeks so they did brought the replacement and uh, kind of help carry that water. As we shift our attention over to the offense, uh, Jeff Davidson remained the offensive line coach, and that was a head scratcher for some fans. Maybe we just don't know better, but the team is moving away from that zone blocking scheme they've used for really the last several years back to the Childress days, and they're moving to more of a man to man blocking scheme. I'm curious from your perspective, how hard is that change for players to absorb and adjust to? What I'm really interested in is the um, not from necessarily a blocking standpoint. I think the offensive line is going to have their own challenges there, but I think. From Adrian Peterson's standpoint, I'm really curious to see how patient he can be with the ball in his hands. We've seen already in preseason how they've shifted away from running a lot of, you know, in between power type of runs where North Turner's offense calls for more stretch plays out to the sides or outside of the hash league. And I'm interested to see how well Peterson can really allow those blocks to set up in front of him and, and hopefully he doesn't get overly eager and try to push the ball. Uh, a field before the blocks really set their set their hold. Because I think ultimately that that's gonna be a pretty telling sign for us. And we haven't been able to see it because they've uh they've been keep keeping uh Peterson healthy, which is obviously the uh, the right decision in my opinion as well. You know, it's funny that you say that because you know Peterson's always struggled with that, especially early in his career, waiting for those blocks to develop. One thing I noticed was uh rookie Jarek McKinnon, he does wait pretty patiently on the blocks, so that's what was impressed me so far. What are your thoughts of him? That's a great question. I actually I posted a piece on Jared McKinnon's uh, development so far uh, just today to Viking Territory.com, so it's, it's, it's fitting timing. Uh, I think Jared's been getting better. I think, you know, coming out of the open game, he showed some initial really patient runs, which was really encouraging. He shows flashes where he can be super patient and, and, and kind of run the, run the play as it's designed. I have seen some plays where he gets a little antsy, the blocks don't set right away, and he tries to break the run outside, and obviously... As a rookie, you're still getting acclimated with the speed of the game. The NFL is much faster than, than any college team, obviously, is. And, and those defenders can beat you know, just fast as you can get out there. So you've got to be patient. I think he's doing a really nice job. He seems more decisive uh, in the Kansas City game. He seems much less hesitant than he has been in the weeks past. And uh, he just seems to be understanding where his cuts are going to be, where his holes are going to be, where he can exploit them, and, and, and ultimately kind of run with a lean forward. I've been happy with his progress. I'd like to see a little bit more explosiveness out of them, but uh, that might just be part of the vanilla offense that Turner's rolling out during the preseason at this point. Yeah, you know, it's funny because the changes with North Turner's offense brings with us more pulling on running plays, especially out front for the sweeps. How do you think that style is going to open up the run game on the edges? That's a great question. I think, you know, we saw a really good example of that just this past week in Kansas City where McKinnon had a nice counter run to the right side and Charlie Johnson pulled to the right side to kind of seal off the defense. I'm a huge fan of those runs. There was nothing more frustrating than me when we tried to run three, you know, inside runs right up the middle to try to break, you know, 10, 15 yards. When the defense knew that was really going to constantly try to run the ball. I think when you have the speed of someone like Derek McKinnon, when you have the speed of obviously of, of all pro Adrian Peterson, breaking it outside if you have the blocking set up, it's going to make up for pretty incredible games along the sidelines. I trust Adrian Peterson against the defensive back 10 times out of 10 times. I think that's what it gives you the opportunity to do. I think it also allows you to kind of keep Adrian Peterson a little healthier, run to the outside, passing out of the backfield. Uh, it gives Peterson the ability to not have to take those constant blows from a defensive tackle or a linebacker like he has been for the last, you know, seven years. And it gives him the chance to kind of keep his legs fresh and, and maybe, you know, run out of bounds 
occasionally uh, rather than having to lower the shoulder and play summer cows. Absolutely. Well, obviously, we want to keep him healthy for as long as we can because he's a difference maker. And oh, yeah. Know, yeah, and so far in preseason and training camp, we've seen a whole lot more use of the tight end on downfield patterns and really a heavy dose of screen passes, both in camp and the preseason games. Uh, can you give fans a feel for what kind of offensive change the Vikings will see under North Turner this year? I think, you know, the Vikings are wise to extend Kyle Ross prior to the season, because I think he's, he's on the brink of a breakout season, and not just from a talent standpoint, but just from how North Turner's offense focuses on the tight end. That seam route right up the middle is going to be huge for him, I believe. Any crossing pattern is kind of a safety blanket for a quarterback when you have a big target like that, 10, 12, 15 yards downfield crossing across the defense. It gives you a huge opportunity to get your target in stride. I think North Turner's offense as a whole is going to call for a lot of the downfield play, not necessarily explosive, but longer passes or longer routes to be run prior to the Cordell Patterson touchdown in the Kansas City game, I should say. I was drafting a tweet saying this feels like an opportunity where North Turner's going to take a shot, and sure enough, on first down, they threw, a, they threw a long pass pattern and it was successful. I think Turner is really, really smart about when he takes the shot. He's not afraid to do it on first or second and short. Uh, and allow his, you know, his team to really pick up some major yards when the defense might not be looking for it. I think that's going to be an exciting component of the team. And I think ultimately, as we touched on a little bit earlier, you're going to see some receiving uh, out of the backfield too. Adrian Peterson is going to be asked to catch a lot of footballs. He hasn't had a lot as a, as a, a pro so far, but he's going to be asked to do a lot of it this year. When I was doing my Derek McKinnon breakdown, um, I was trying to see, you know, some NFL game rewind, trying to see how well he was blocking and pass protection or staying in the back of the help for pass protection. It was really hard to even find examples of that because they just asked him to run routes or, you know, little chip blocks and then he's out to the pass. And I think, uh, that's a different side of the game that we're going to see as well. So I think ultimately it's going to be an offense that gives, uh, our quarterbacks the opportunity to really stretch the field, but then give them plenty of check downs and space to get some extra yardage when, when the play might not be there. Well, when we talked to former Viking quarterback Brad Johnson, he said, obviously played under North Turner, he said that Turner's offense is really quarterback friendly. I'm curious, what does that mean, and what would you expect Norv and his son, who's quarterback coach uh, Scott Turner, to do in order to accelerate Teddy Bridgewater's readiness to start in the league? So, quarterback friendly, I think ultimately that is dependent on a couple of things. Quarterback friendly in terms of the routes that the receivers are running. To be quarterback friendly in terms of where you're putting receivers and during a play and what your reads or progressions are so you can make quick progressions through a play. Uh, I think also it is it's quarterback friendly because maybe North Turner is making calls that make sense for a quarterback during that scenario or that situation. There would be times of last year uh, or the year previous where we would see Christian Ponder roll out to his left and throw across his body. That seemed to be a common play. And it, it was always a head scratch. It did seem like a natural play for him to make the Musgrave and, and, and company continue to call it. And there was some success there we had, and I think sometimes it's got to be done off guard, but ultimately it just it never seemed to be in his comfort zone. I think that's the big thing that you're going to see out of Teddy moving forward. And what I've been really impressed with, how is Turner really kind of getting Teddy's feet wet here initially in the league and, uh, at first? He had a shaky start in the, in the game versus uh, Open. The second game against Arizona, he looked awesome, obviously, and really uh, drove the team down the field with a minute left and left, and, and what great exposure that is for a rookie to get in a preseason game, a, a kind of a two-minute drill scenario with the game on the line. Uh, and then last week, he didn't, he didn't have an opportunity to really do a lot of passing. He made some nice throws. Yeah, obviously, he had a few touchdowns, but they were almost granted to him because he, they were uh, set up in the red zone right out of the gate. I think that's what Norv is going to be really, really good at is managing Cuddy's ability to make smart throws and ultimately he's not going to put him, put him in a position that calling a play that could potentially hurt Bridgewater's confidence by making a bad throw or throwing an interception or, you know, don't have him to throw out of the shotgun on, on third and eighth in the red zone. I mean, just, you know, play it smart and let the kid come back in, in the next drive. Well, Brian, I can tell you, you know, after our conversation tonight, I, I know I'm brighter on the things I need to look at uh, from the coaching staff uh, in 2014, and we really appreciate you pointing those out. And don't forget, guys, you can catch all of Brent's stories on vikingsterritory.com. And again, Brent, thanks for joining us on vikefans.com tonight. I appreciate the time, Tom. I, I was happy to do it, and uh, hopefully we can do it again in the future. Sounds good. <laughs>